When radio was raw and wild, PJ was in charge. Producing radio and TV for some of the greats in the industry, PJ has seen it all. From Disco Duck to What the F***, this is Streaming Legends with PJ. Hey, yo, on the pod today, I'm so excited, the very lovely and talented Jennifer Edwards, actress, writer, producer. Jennifer, of course, the daughter of famous movie director Blake Edwards and stepmother Julie Andrews. I mean, what a family and what story she's about to tell us. I mean, we dig into uh, her experience with Walt Disney. We talk about all kinds of things that have gone on in her life and her her love and everything. You're going to love this. It's happening right now. Let's go streaming legends. All right. I am so excited to have not only my friend, but the very lovely and talented Jennifer Edwards here with us. How are you? Good. How are you doing? It's so I, good to see you. Thank you. I'm doing great. You know, it's it's good to be seen. Let me tell you that, as you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a while for us, but uh we're longtime friends. I know. I, I was trying to remember. I, I, I think I think when we first met, it was like 1982. I think so. I think so. And was it at uh, the radio station? I can't yeah. even remember. Yeah, yeah. OK. It was there. Yeah. Right there. So, yeah. in your career, of course, you know, I mean, I've got all these questions, Jennifer, even though you're my friend. We've probably never talked about a lot of these things. But to me, as I was reviewing stuff and looking at the legendary family that you come from, which is incredible. Your dad being Blake Edwards, your stepmom being Julie Andrews. The first thing that came to my mind is, you know, because I thought of myself in that role, I said, how would I make myself stand out in a family like this? I mean, there's Oscar winners all around you, Grammy winners. I mean, all this stuff going on, but yet you kept your head. You did your own thing. You amassed an amazing career of movies and tv stuff which we'll talk about some of that but and you did it all like just like a normal person i mean it had to be hard to do well yeah it was in in some ways i mean i i there were times where i remember one story you just made me think of where i was going to network for a, a tv series and i knew it was between me and one other woman or we were young i was in my 20s and I was walking down the hallway and I, the, the room, the door was open where all the producers and the network people were. And I heard somebody say, here comes Blake Edwards' daughter. Let's see what she can do. Uh, and, I, and I literally stood in the hallway and I just sort of froze because I, I thought, you know, it shouldn't come down to, to that. It, you know, I mean, I was already there in front of the network for a reason and um you know who my dad is or was shouldn't really play a part in you know who i am and and it it really kind of took me aback Um, yeah no i mean i imagine that's what came to my head because you know you're looking at your dad who's done probably the most or some of the most famous movies ever you know the blake blake edwards name is amazing and it stands out with with uh, Peter Sellers and all the great movies, the Pink Panther series and 10, of course, Bo Derek and all these like legendary movies that everybody still talks about to this day. And of course, they just carry on. Yeah. And so, yeah, that to me would be like something that would be hard to overcome. But yet then I found out about you because you keep it to yourself. Uh, you burst on the scene as a little girl in Heidi, which, of course, I knew. And you're the star of Heidi. And this is a TV movie. And, 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 and you have to understand if people are, are listening right now that don't understand the power of television then even versus now. A TV movie was like the thing then, yeah. you know, and in, in, in talking about in the in late 60s. And so Heidi comes on. This is a movie everybody's waiting to see. It's an a- adaptation of the film. And <laughs> yeah yeah and they play it it starts at seven o'clock and it interrupts one of the biggest nfl games of the time right it's yep. the it's the raiders versus the jets and it's uh i think there was like a minute five left and the score the raiders had just scored it's 32 to 29 joe namath is the quarterback of the jets 
And they, these guys, these two teams were battling for first place. And, the, and here's the kicker. There were three more scores when they cut off that game with a minute left and went to Heidi, your movie. And people went crazy. All the NFL crazy. people, of course, right? They blew up the not phones. Just, yeah, not just, not just the NFL people. It, uh, NBC was, was inundated uh, by phone calls uh, and in those days, they still had a switchboard and supposedly the switchboard literally blew up. It yeah. caught fire. <laughs> you actually blew it up. They actually blew it up. And um, and for years, supposedly, they referred at NBC to the phones as Heidi phones. <laughs> that is so funny. You know what? If you look up that game, you look up that 1968 game, they call it, they refer to it now as the Heidi game. Yep. Because... And that actually, I think, became a rule that the NFL said, based on that, they said, you can never, if we give you a game, you cannot interrupt it for a, for a production of any kind. So, exactly. I mean, you, you found a way, little you, <laughs> it, it, the little tiny girl that you were, to burst on the scene and get your own credibility, it, good or bad, you got it, you know, right. and, and uh, in a family like yours. So that's what stuck out to me. And I went, wait a minute. I didn't even know that story. That's an incredible story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, well, I always say that, well, actually, Howie, I have to give Howie Mandel credit because years ago he said you were, you were a great moment in sports. So I, I always said that, that will be on my tombstone. She was a great moment in sports. <laughs> <laughs> you were, but you were also a great moment in many other things. Well, Star Trek next generation i mean you've done a fine mess sob so many movies some of them were your dad's movies some weren't but you met so many huge stars and i have to ask you because i'm a huge fan of the peter sellers thing and i just i was crushed when peter sellers died that had to be such an awful thing for your family because i'm sure your dad and everybody was so close with peter sellers at that time and it was so unexpected right yeah well my dad and peter had a very very, very complicated relationship. And my dad spoke about it many times. So I'm not, you know, um, speaking out of line here, but um, toward the end, it was in, in their working relationship is very complicated. Peter was um, having sort of hallucinations. And it was, you know, I grew up with his kids. His son, Michael was my first sort of boyfriend when huh. I was 13. And I mean, so the whole Sellers Edwards family Sarah his his daughter and I are still very close and yeah um you know uh it was they, they finally kind of um managed to um rekindle if you will a little bit of a relationship about a year before Peter actually died um which I think meant a lot to my dad um because it it, it really was very um hostile in a lot of ways when they would, were working together on the last few Pink Panther movies um, uh, so it was uh but it was like it was like you know almost like two brothers in a way you know they, yeah they fought and they you know made up and it was but it was it was definitely complicated but fortunately like I said there was some sort of reconciliation toward the end yeah I know but it was good. it was a shock yeah it had to be a shock and then uh, and I can imagine in that with all that going on and then you know, you had to have like amazing parties at your house with, I mean, really as a family growing came up. came to some of them. I did come to some of them, but, <laughs> but they don't know that. Okay. Well, now they do. <laughs> now they do. You know, yeah, no, I, I believe me, I was at some of the parties. They were amazing, but I, I just want you to tell, tell us about some of the parties and tell us about, you know, the, the type of people. I mean, you, J Ted Danson, John Ritter, I mean, amazing people that, yeah. that were just part of your life, just were everyday part of your life, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's funny because people will say to me, you know, everybody, and, and there's sort of a, sometimes it's, it's not in a very complimentary way when they say that, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I am fourth generation. My youngest daughter, Hannah, is fifth generation in Hollywood. Um, I don't know another family, you know, the, even the Barrymores, I think Drew is third generation. I don't know many, you know, uh, generational Hollywood families that go back that far. Um, so, you know, my great grandfather was a director. My grandfather was a 
uh, an assistant director and a production manager, and then my dad, and then me, and then and my daughter. Yeah, so, so you know, when you when you put all that together, we all know tons of people that were in the business. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's astounding. I mean, I know your brother too. Your brother, I think, was didn't director. he? Yeah, isn't your your sister in law was part of the Crosby family, yes. right, Denise? Uh -huh. My former sister-in-law, Denise, yeah, she was on Star Trek and yeah, she's done yeah. amazing stuff. She's an amazing actress. Yeah. 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 And then uh, now now he's my, married to Sarah uh, yeah, Haskins. Very successful writer. And yeah. So producer yeah. of Blackish and all that, you know. I mean, yeah, it just goes on and on and on, but it, in all that, and that was my original point. You managed to be who you are. You're a lovely person and you've always kept your head and you you've always stayed in your your lane and done amazing stuff on your own. You know, so and that to me is incredible. This picture behind you, I'm wondering what this is. What is that picture behind? Oh, you? that's uh, well, my father was quite a uh, an amazing artist. He did, um, he worked in acrylics. That's me, and that's my younger daughter Hannah. That's a sort of abstract. Oh, very uh, cool. Two of us, and yeah, but he, you know, he was a sculptor as well. I actually have some of. This is one of his sculptures, the sitting duck. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. He's great. I mean, he's so talented to he be was, able to do this kind really of stuff. Was. Yeah. It was his sort of hobby. And, but he was so prolific with his artwork. And, you know, he finally was given a show at the Pacific Design Center, which is this huge, you know, uh, place in West Hollywood. And they, they took over the whole bottom floor and, and, and showed his paintings and sculptures and, and it filled the whole bottom floor of the Pacific Design Center, which is huge. Wow, that he is was huge. always very kind of private about it, but we kept encouraging him that he should he needed to show people, you know, what he did in his you know, spare time. <laughs> I he mean, yeah. when he had any, I mean, if I went through the list of movies, I've got pages and pages of his movies. I don't know when the man had time, honestly, to do anything. But I just know how nice a person he was when we were at his parties and met him. He's just such a mellow, nice guy. You would never think all of this could come out of one person like that. No, but it's true. I mean, it was amazing. Where did he get the idea for some of these characters like the Peter Sellers, the Pink Panther, those types of things? Where did it come from? It, well, it, it came from him. Uh, we were kind of known for being very, very clumsy. The Edwardses are very... <laughs> Clumsy. So, mm -hmm. it, so Inspector Clouseau was lo loosely based on my dad. <laughs> Literally, you know, he would walk into walls, he would, you know, trip and fall. And so he just, you know, he, he was sort of bumbling in his own way. And that's where that character came from. And uh, he just had, he just had an amazing, you know, um, sense of humor and imagination. I mean, he started in radio. Well, he started as an actor. Mm -hmm. He was best known for Hangman of the Swamp, which he started. <laughs> <laughs> That's some title. <laughs> I know. Um, and um, but he started really in radio as a writer. Um, so he wrote um, a detective series called Richard Diamond. So he he kind of had that um, that inspector detective uh, thing going anyway. And then he decided that he would make it into more of a comedic um, role for and and uh, and Sellers, you know, I, I I don't know if you know this. Sellers was not the original Clouseau. Um, no, I don't know that. Okay, it was very interesting because a couple of times this happened to my dad, where he cast uh, Peter Ustinov was going to be the original Inspector Clouseau, mm -hmm. and about a week into, they were already in Rome getting ready to shoot the first Pink Panther and. Um, for whatever reason, Ustinov just said, I don't want to do this. And my dad knew of Sellers. Sellers had done, um, I can't remember what, what film he had just done in England, but he wasn't very well known. And my dad went to the studio and said, I know who I want to play Clouseau and mentioned Peter Sellers. And they, they, didn't, they didn't go for it at first, but he oh, yeah. was very insistent. He said, I, I want him to to do it and they finally agreed. And literally my dad and Peter met on a train station in Rome as Peter got off the train and it was like, hi, I'm Blake, hi, I'm Peter and let's get, you know, going. And, wow. and that was, yeah. 
that happened and it also happened with um uh 10. yes yeah. uh, george siegel was originally going to play george weber oh and, um and about a week beforehand george backed out and my dad said i'm going to use dudley moore and the studio was like who's that <laughs> <laughs> Well, I happened to be in group therapy with me, with him, <laughs> and, and cast Dudley. So that, that well, you know how that worked out amazingly well. And, and did he always have Bo Derek? Was she always the one in mind for the team? No, he he, um, he must have screen tested. I don't know, fifty people. He actually screen tested me for it too, and I kept saying, I I can't, you know. Um, but he really didn't know exactly. He 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 had a vision, uh, and then he was at a party, I think, and and a casting person. I can't remember who it was, right off the bat. Um, but this casting person said, "Are you still looking for your ten? And he said, "Yes, I am." And he, and she said, "Well, I I know who it is." And he asked who, and she, she said, "Do you know John Derrick?" He said, "Yes, I know John." He said, "Well, it's." It's John's wife, Bo. Oh. And uh, my dad said, well, do you know how to get in touch with her? And and anyway, the next day, Bo walked into his office and they sat down and talked for a little while. And then she left and my dad picked up the phone and called my stepmother and said, I found my 10. And she said, who? And he said, her name's Bo Derek. My stepmother said, can she act? He said, I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> 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 but she's, my yeah. 10. she's a 10 that's all you needed to know and he was right i mean she Definitely. was Definitely. I mean, amazing and julie andrews whom you're speaking of of course amazing story and her movies with disney and the sound of music and uh all of the great films that she did you know did uh did she ever get to, did you ever get to meet disney walt disney and have him over anything? well uh, ironically you know, when I, not through, through her, when I was uh, about five or six years old, um, I had a lemonade stand. Um, uh, we, we lived in Beverly Hills and I had a lemonade stand like on the weekends and uh, Walt Disney was one of my um, clients, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> he, literally, he literally would come to my lemonade stand and buy some lemonade from me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I met him. I didn't I, you know, I didn't even know really who he was. He was just a, he was a neighbor. Right. You know, I later on learned that. Yeah, that's Disney. Yeah, that was uh, was that probably before Mary Poppins and all that with Julie or yeah. And then just about the right. This it was probably around. Well, probably within like a year of, of Poppins. Yeah. Yeah. But and, and I know your relationship with Dick Van Dyke, you, you know, Dick. And, yeah. yeah i haven't seen him in forever but yes. right yeah, yeah he he's run. great I know I he's, he's he's such a character i see him in the market right and he still dances around and i mean he's great he's incredible yeah. you yeah. know I yeah know. it's just it's a, what a what an awesome thing though to have like julie andrews and your and your dad blake edwards and to have all that and your brother and your sister i mean it really is a legendary family you know and I know that you um, you have done writing too. You you've written, you know. You, I, I think you wrote a children's book too at one time, didn't no, you? No, my my no, my my sister Emma and my 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 stepmother um, they write the children's books. I write the erotic books. Ah, tell us about that. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny that you mentioned it because I had actually had uh, this. This is my first novel, um, When Angels Cry. Um, I had it out because I'm somebody asked to read it and so mm -hmm. i was going to give it to them later today um so yeah that's my I'm, and i'm working on my second novel right now and um i'm i'm very proud of it and i've got a uh one of my screenplays right now is is uh um a producer is looking to raise money to to hopefully get that made sometime this year which i'm fingers crossed mm -hmm. um yes yeah, so i i've been doing a lot of writing i write uh um lyrics with my 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 fiance is a, a composer and we've written several songs together as well and so that's yeah that's also something that's very important to me and um makes me happy <laughs> do, you, do you find that 
how does that differ for you in feeling as versus like acting in a role or versus writing on your own? Writing is very singular and it's just you and, you know. Yeah, I, I miss, uh, you know, I, acting is my, is, you know, is in my DNA. I, that's, that's where I always want to go back to. Basically, I, I, I love performing. I did a play a few years ago and just being on the stage again and being in front of an audience was just, you know, so exhilarating and reminded me how much I love performing. Um, writing screenplays is fun too, because I get to, in my head, be all these different characters. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way it's, it's like acting um, on paper. Um, writing a novel is not so easy, uh, you know, um, but, yeah. but it's very rewarding once you finish. Yeah. Are these topics for your novels that you've had in your head for a long time that you wanted to do? Um, the one that I'm working on now, yes, because it's based on on an incident that I saw years ago that really kind of uh, shook me to the core. I always uh, wondered, it was based around a suicide. And um, and I always wondered what what, you know, brought this person to do what he did and um and and you know well you'll you'll read it yeah 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 i want to read it that's yeah but the, but the the first book when angels cry was just one of those um i wanted to see how it felt to write a book so basically i i kind of cheated i thought okay well i'm gonna make my character a, a romance novelist because mm -hmm. that's what i thought i'd write a romance novel because you know, I knew I couldn't write The Grapes of Wrath. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I decided to make the lead character also a romance novelist. So I could kind of delve into her, her psyche, if you will. And um, I, I was really proud of it. I'm, I'm still really proud of it. People, you know, really resonated with it. And it's funny and it's, and it's, you know, sad at times. And, and it's, it's an easy read. I've had people say, that you know, I don't usually read. I'm not a reader, but they'll sit down with that and and they'll call me or whatever and say I read it in one sitting. You know, so that was kind of what my you know objective yeah. was. You know, well, you have that brain where you're able to connect like that, and so it's it's very easy to read. I'm sure because you're thinking of it as a movie in your head, probably or something. You know, you're putting it together that way, so it it makes it those types of things are fun for me to read. I enjoy that type of writing, you know, yeah. and it, it makes it fun and easy to read, you know, but you had to have yeah. some, some, uh, with all the characters you've been with, and, you know, the John Ritters of the world, the Ted Danson's of the world, all these people, I mean, any, anything really stands out to you that happened when you were filming, you know, Howie Mandel, any of that that just was kind of off the wall, and that would, well, yeah, I mean, you bring up Howie, I brought up Howie, I mean, we're, we all still, Howie's wife, Terry, is a good dear friend and um yeah I, well Howie and Ted and I when when we all worked together I don't know I really don't know how it began uh my dad was kind of a practical joker and so is Howie um and somehow I moved into being like the third wheel Howie and I would go do things sabotage Ted's um trailer we threw a firecracker in his trailer bathroom one day, knowing who was in there. And then Ted said, let's, you know, got roped me into like filling Howie's trailer with dirt. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, you know, it was, we had a great time. We stole, we stole one of the golf carts off the, off the studio lot and drove it around Culver city. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. In and out of traffic. And yeah, yeah I mean, crazy stuff but but yeah. we had you know just a great time and um, you, and your dad got i remember at the uh he was honored at the oscars and mm -hmm. he did that that stunt with uh, james carey mm -hmm. which was which i thought was really funny he was in a wheelchair and well, he, yeah he and he actually was most of the time in a wheelchair um the last few years of his life but when he was when he was told that he was going to be honored, he he told the academy. He said, "I you know I don't want to. I it's it'll be hard for me to walk on stage and whatever." But he and he just felt like he needed to do something that nobody else ever did. And 
and you know my dad was known for his comedy so <laughs> we arranged to in fact the, the man who um who actually was the the double the stunt double uh was a man named joe dunn who was my dad's coordinator for years and he was peter sellers's double and he coordinated all of my dad's stunts and he actually just passed away a couple nights ago and oh no but he joe was was actually the man in the wheelchair that crashed into the wall <laughs> that, that was funny and then your dad came walking out and i, I love this line because it's a classic peter sellers line where he, he dusted himself off and he said, that felt good. <laughs> it's very funny. I mean, one of my favorite scenes, and I, I forget, it's a shot in the dark or what movie that was, where he fell off the banister in front of all those people. He was exercising. Well, well, he was doing, he was, yeah, he was doing the, the parallel, uh, the parallel balls. Yeah. <laughs> love the parallel balls. That was, uh, I think that was uh, Revenge. Maybe was, Revenge. Yeah. Revenge. And fall, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And how did your dad work that out when, you know, in the in one of the final movies with Peter Sellers still living, he actually passed away during the movie, right? Like 18 yeah. weeks in or months in, whatever it was. And he had to rewrite the story or? Yeah, I, yeah, I think he did. And also there were there were a lot of there was a lot of doubling. And I think there were some um, outtakes or, or different things that he didn't use, things that ended up on the cutting room floor, but he brought back in. Don't really know exactly how he, he managed that, but I mean, he did. So yeah. yeah, he did it. But I mean, that, that just had the, I was thinking about that thing and how that had to throw everybody into a tizzy because there you are with the star of all these movies and you're in the middle of this one. And all of a sudden something unfortunate like that happens and you've got to still put your movie together and make it work, you know, and he did it. To his yeah. credit, you know, but that's yeah. that had to be a huge undertaking, you know. It was, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And sadly, we lost. I know a friend of yours, Bob Saget, who I think you were going to have lunch with him the week. Uh, yeah. Well, next we, week, we, right? we we well no he he we emailed we were emailing right before he went on tour, uh, um, and um, yeah, the plan was when he came back, we would have lunch and you know get together and. Um, I mean, I, I was trying to remember when I first met him too, it was back in the eighties and, you know, we lost touch here and there and, but we always kind of, you know, we, well, I, I was looking through old e emails and we started sort of emailing again in like 2008 and, um, he was just, you know, he was just such a, a an amazing human and, um, we, we shared, uh, a, you know, he lost his sister to scleroderma. I lost a cousin to scleroderma. So we had that in common as well. And I don't know, it just, uh, it, it was stunning. Yeah. It was stunning. It was a lot like how, you know, I felt when, when Ritter passed. Yeah. Um, you know, you just, you sort of can't believe it. Um, so yeah, very sad. Yeah, that was it was very sad. I, I knew him as well. And he was always such a nice guy, always upbeat, friendly, you know, just just a nice a prince of a guy, really, you know, and just wanting to have fun and always helpful to other people that wanted to get into the business or whatever. He was always there, you know, to help. Yeah. So it was stunning. John Ritter was very stunning to me because that was one that I think obviously could have been prevented. You know, I think that. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, um, who, you know, that's one of those um, diseases, if you will, or, or, or chronic uh, or, or, you know, congenital, obviously, uh, issue that you wouldn't know really unless you were, you know, you had a, a cardiologist, you know, uh, uh, that you saw once a year or yeah. whatever. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, they still don't really know what happened with Bobby, but um, it sounds like it's, you know, probably heart or something. Yeah, yeah. But, that, well, you know, um, yeah, that's, that was sad, too, you know, but listen, they're all great stars and they all they all left their mark on the world. You know, your dad certainly left his mark on the world. And there's something about your dad. I don't care if it was TV he was doing or if it was movies or whatever, you could tell it was a Blake Edwards production, the way it was shot. And, and you know, the, the way he always shot everything so cleanly. And it's just the style that, that poked through and you could tell immediately that it was his production, 
you know, right. and I really, I really love that style, you know, of yeah. doing it, you know, and I think, I don't know, I, I, it was probably just something that he had in his head, but he was able to bring it across on the screen, which is very difficult to do, because you know how many people are involved in a movie, you know, so, but he did it time and time again, so. Too was he was one of the first people he helped develop actually the uh, video playback. Um, he was using that, and some of the people that he worked with helped. They all helped develop this this technology of being able to you know shoot a scene and then watch it on playback immediately. Um, so uh, as as opposed to you know shooting all day and then you go and watch your dailies, they're called you know yeah which was from the day before. And then you decide, okay, I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna keep that, whatever. Um, this way he could literally watch what he just shot and say, okay, I wanna do another take or let's move the camera here or whatever, right on the spot. So that always helped. Yeah. And he also was the kind of person when, when he worked, he, he knew like the next day, he would tell the camera, uh, you know, the DP or, or you know, whatever I, what he was going to shoot the next day mm -hmm. so he could just walk on the set and everybody had already set it up because wow. he had it in his mind already how he was going to film it film wow. the next day and yeah. Um, yeah no that's that's legendary that's what legend is made of and how was it like for him to work with julie your stepmother when they were doing a movie together was it seamless or were there a lot of bickering going on or who was the boss um he was, mm -hmm. but not in a, not in any kind of, you know, I mean, she would certainly make suggestions. He loves, he loves, he loved actors. Um, having been one, he knew what it felt like. So he was always very um, appreciative if actors came to him and said, I want to try this, or can I do this or whatever? And he go, yeah, go for it, try it, yeah. you know? Um, and you know, so yes, she certainly would would uh, make suggestions and whatever. But you know, ultimately, he you know he mostly directed what he wrote. Mm -hmm. So he already knew, you know already had a vision of of how he wanted it to look and and feel and all of that uh, right from the get go. So, um, but yeah, he he they loved working together. It was it was perfect because nobody was on location without somebody you know right and yeah it was great and and how was it for you to work be directed by your dad was that harder than other people or the same well you know like i said sort of in the beginning i know that to a degree um people you know want to think that it's all nepotism and all of that but and i did say to my dad i think i said to him when I was probably in my early thirties and I can't remember what we were working on. Um, and I, and I said, you know, do you really feel that, that, um, that this role is right or something that he asked me to do? And, and he said, look, you know, I'm not going to make a fool of myself at this time in, in my life. If, if I didn't think you could do this, you wouldn't be doing it. Right. So it, it validated, you know that it wasn't just because i was his daughter that i was getting a part right because you know that he certainly did movies you know where i wasn't a part of or anything so yeah i mean i you know i think it is it is a it, it is a different sort of feeling when you come from a famous family and you're also uh, you know in the business and uh, there had to be a movie where you he did it and you wanted to do it and you went you know what i could do that role i could have done that role he wouldn't give it to me or you didn't try or whatever but you you, you know do you have one of those no 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 mm -mm. no nope. see nope. i would i'd have like two or three where i go i could do that come on i could do that yeah well i think you know i mean no i can't really think of any one movie offhand but uh I mean, there were times where he, uh, I had written a, a, a treatment and um, he really liked it. And then we wrote the pilot together and it was, a, it was for Disney actually. And um, I wrote the part for myself. Uh, and um, when it came down to wh where the 
where Disney wanted to produce it. It was with George Carlin. <laughs> um, I, I actually screen tested and so did a couple other girls um, because I didn't want to just assume that just because I wrote the part, I was going to get the part. Sure. And um, but I did write it for myself and I didn't get the part. Oh. Disney Disney went with with another young actress who was fantastic. She was very different from me, but um, um, and and that I have to say, and and she and I are still friends. I mean, <laughs> we became really good friends. But um, but it that one stung. Yeah, that one stung a little bit. Yeah, that had to. I mean, something like that where you, especially since you wrote it, yeah, and you know, you probably wrote it with that in mind that I could play this part. This is me. <laughs> and, then, and then somebody looks at it and says, this isn't you, you know, it's like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would have voted for you anytime to be 10. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I do. I would have. So, you know, well, that's I'll tell you something because Bo and I are still really, really great friends too. And, and um, uh, she's still, I swear to God, you know, she, she walks into a room and people just stop. Yeah. Um, she's stunning and she's such a nice human being. And yeah. yeah. She carries herself in a very unique way. You know, mm -hmm. the way you're so right, the way she walks into a room and her posture and her movements are eye catching, you know, aside from the way she looks, just yeah. that aspect of the way she moves. Yep. And that stature that she has, it's pretty amazing to- Well, and it's so funny too, because she's, you know, she's actually, you know, very tiny. She's five, two and a half or something. Yeah. But she doesn't appear that way. No, know? she appears tall. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't John Derrick, her husband. He was a little, very short yeah. guy, right? Well, yeah, he wasn't that short. I mean, he was maybe five, seven, five, eight, something like that. But yeah. he also was, you know, strikingly handsome. Yeah. 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 He's a good looking guy there classy couple yeah. just kind of, kind of like Blake and Julie Andrews yes, thank you. <laughs> Save it. hey uh, so good getting together with you thank and I appreciate you. you taking the time thank I you really do. thank yeah, you it's, it's been a lot of fun and we'll hopefully you'll come back and do it again with us sometime love to okay absolutely yes and I'm going to send you one of these mugs yay I'll yes. send you, and I'll send you my novel please yeah, please. Yeah, that's perfect. And then, of course, we'll arrange for a, a luncheon or something. We Definitely. Have I want to see June. And yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the beautiful Thank Jennifer you. Edwards. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to Streaming Legends with PJ. Make sure to subscribe and leave a rating and review. And don't forget to recommend the show to a friend. For more podcasts and online content, go to thisisfunner.com.